Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Van Sickle and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take a very basic cornice board and change the look and the feel simply by adding different embellishments. Things like covered buttons and how about this um, Chinese uh, knot made out of turn cord nail heads. We all know that nail heads are pretty popular right about now. We're even going to use some braids and trims, like this little trim right here, because of course we know that they're popular as well. And I have another trim over here that we'll be using. It's a little um, pleated trim. And if you don't have a, a trim, if you cannot find a trim that matches um, your cornice board, I know that we have a lot of scraps in our um, scrap pile, um, or you can even purchase fabric and make your own. What about belts? Have you ever thought about using belts to embellish a cornice board with? Look around your workroom and I am sure that you will find other elements that you can use for a cornice board. How about some jute webbing? We know that farmhouse look is in right about now. And like I said, you don't always have to go out and buy trim. Look in your scrap pile and I'm sure that you can find some fabric that you can make into a banding and add some grommets. So follow along while I take one cornice at a time and I will give you a different look for each one. Now for the purpose of this video I've gone ahead and completely covered all three of the cornice boards and I've done so using the method shown in my instructional video. I really like to have uh, face fabric on the very top of the dust board and it goes around to the back and I've covered the back using blackout lining. Now I'm pretty picky about um, my corners and I like nice miters and I like to cut out as much bulk as possible. I really want the back edge to look finished as well as the front. Now some of the embellishment options that I will be showing today will need to be added during the construction phase and some can be added at the very end um, and overlay on top of the, the face. And as we go along, I will explain which ones um, need to be added during the construction phase. When it comes time to embellish your cornice boards, do not limit yourself to the pre-made trims and braids. Be creative and really think about the personality of the person that may be occupying that room, whether it's a man's office or a little girl's room or a boy's room or maybe even a family room. So this particular cornice board, because it's blue, made me think that it could go into say a man's office or even a little boy's room or even a teen's room. So I chose this blue fabric and I cut a strip that's six inches wide by the, the width of my uh, cornice and that will go around each side of my leg and to the back of the leg and maybe an extra inch and a half so they can tuck under my lining. And I decided that I wanted an uneven uh, number of grommets because I thought it would look best. And you can certainly change the number of grommets that you have depending on the fabric that you used. Because sometimes there might be a certain design on the fabric and you might want it to pick through the grommets. So again, you can certainly change the placement of those. Anyway, um, you can take this banding and you can uh, put it up on the top. You can bring it into the center and you can also use it as a banding across the bottom. And if you made two strips, you could put one on the left side and one on the right side. Doesn't that look great? Now they're easy to attach and this is one that you would um, of course attach after your face fabric was on and secure. You find your location and, and uh, get it centered just right and then you would turn your cornice over and you would bring it in nice and taut, bring it to the inside and then you would staple it along this crease here of the, the leg where the leg meets the face and do it of course on both sides and then you would attach um, your lining on the top. Now if you've already added your lining to the back you can certainly um, take this piece and just turn it under and give it a couple uh, staples. 
and then along the face once you have it positioned just right and it's measured then I would just take some um, fabric glue and just run a, pe a bead of glue up underneath underneath here and underneath the bottom edge as well and that will um, help keep it in place so there's one idea and how about belts have you ever thought about embellishing cornice boards with belts now I have this belt here and it has uh, these two little uh, decorative uh, pieces on it and so you can certainly use this and again you can um, change the placement you can top center down to the bottom and you can also don't forget the buckles too buckles are a great embellishment but you can take the take this belt and buckle it like so and you can just wrap it right on here and you can see how this looks nice if you put um, on this side and if you have another belt just like it you can also run it along here and if your cornice is really wide you would probably need two belts and again you could over you could uh, buckle the belts together in the center of your cornice so that you would have the other piece of the, uh, the other uh, belt running along this way and that that would make the um, the buckle again an embellishment and then you can also show off these little decorative pieces and it depends on how wide your your cornice board is now to secure this to the cornice board um, I would actually put your face fabric on uh, put your belt on and then it gets a little bulky up on the top but you will go ahead and staple it down on the top and you could staple it down along the bottom and then I would uh, go along and add my cording on top of it and yes like I said you'll have a little bit of a, a you'll have a little bit of a, a, a bulge here if you will and if you wanted to, you could probably build that bulge up a little bit by adding an extra row of um, the, the cardboard tacking along here. So that, uh, well actually you probably want to put the cardboard tacking on underneath your face fabric. Okay. So here's another belt that I really love. It is very blingy. And I think that um, this would be great for probably somewhere out west but of course it could go um, for anybody who loves bling and again you've got a nice big buckle that you could center um, onto the center of the cornice board and again you could run it um, vertically if you had two of them if you didn't want to use the buckle you could certainly take it and run it along the bottom doesn't that really make a nice border? And all you would have to do on this one is bring it to the back. And um, you could probably put this one on after the, the cornice board is finished. Because when you brought it to the back, you would probably want to only cut it. Because they had, not all these belts uh, bend very well. And you would just bring it here and probably cut it even with where the face meets the leg and then just staple it and then on the face let's see if I can turn this for you and then uh, to adhere it to the face uh, you probably would try to find a little spot where you can uh, put some staples in there to hold it down and uh, bury them in between some of the crevices here and you can see that there's some little dark pieces in the belt. So if you put the staple in, you could probably take like a little, um, uh, maybe a brown or black magic marker and just kind of um, paint the top, if you will. Mark the top of the staple to kind of disguise it. But oh, I really like this one. That's one of my favorites. Now I was looking around my workroom to see what else we could use to embellish this cornice board. Now um, this 
farmhouse look, of course, is really in. So I found this jute webbing. I thought it would look nice because it had the blue uh, lines in it. And this jute webbing, again, you could take it and you could, just like the other, the belts and the other banding, you could run it in the center. You could put it along the bottom. You could also put it along the top. Now something like this I think would look really cute in maybe a kitchen if someone has that farmhouse look or even in a laundry room or back entryway. And again you can take this jute webbing and you can run it one piece on each side. Give it a nice look. And again I think I would put this one on before I finish the top and before I finish the bottom. I would put my face on, put the jute webbing on, and then that way my cording um, would be on top of this as well as down here. And then, but how about this? What if you take this jute webbing, let's put it up here, let's put it in the center. Because you know what, that still looks a little plain to me. Now this is a shorter piece. Of course this one, let me switch it out so I don't confuse anyone. There's a longer piece. And so of course I would take this and it would wrap around to the back. And if you want to apply it this way, you could put it on um, after you finish the corners or uh, before you finish the back. So what if you took a piece of twill tape? If you wanted to change up the look a little bit. And you could take this twill tape, and I put some little, little nail heads along here. Let me see if I can do this. And this just gives it one more different look. I don't know if I have it centered because I'm looking at it upside down. I'm just going to poke them in here. Of course I would hammer them in, tack them in. Just wanted to give you one more little look here. And again, this one would, would really look nice. Again, this could go into a laundry room, a little kitchen. There you go. I know that hopefully that shows up, but there we go. Okay, you can put these little nail heads in there. All right. I don't want to secure it because I want to show you one more thing. So you can put it along there. And you can also change up the nail heads too. You can give it a different look by adding a different nail head. You can always take this twill tape. Without the jute webbing. And you could take it and you could run it along the top. And you get at, or you can run it along the bottom, or you can add one row along the bottom and one row across the top. Now I want to show you one more option. If you want to use the jute webbing, and you could also take one of the belts and overlay it. There's a blingy belt. Here is the belt with the little, uh, little metal pieces to it. That one looks really smart to me. Whoop. And you could also overlay the um, banding that I made with the grommets on it. You could probably just, this probably just fit. And all you would have to do is just, you know, glue that, layer it, and um, glue these pieces together. So there you go. There are some, uh, quite a few options for this little corner board. Now, first, let me begin by saying that um, one thing that I could have done right off the bat to change the look was to take and put a different fabric along this bottom band here. I could have used, say, maybe a little stripe or maybe even a little check. And sometimes it's fun if you have a little check and you kind of put it on that, um, the bias. That gives it a great look too. And I will tell you that this bottom banding 
is built into the fabrication of the cornice board. And what I mean by that, it is not a separate piece that I have overlaid. Um, it, is, it is actually um, all stapled in. Now another thing I could have done too was taken and added a banding along the top. So let's take a look at something else that we could do. Um, you can add a uh, twist cord that has a lip on it versus using the self fabric cord along the top, the bottom, and where it, the banding um, meets the, the face fabric on the top. So let me just pin this here for you so you can see how it will look. Like I said, we'll pin it across the top. And you can see even though it doesn't have the white in it, it does have um, that little um, blue greeny color. And it's, it, this would be really nice if you did have these other colors in the room. And like I said, you can take and take the lip cord and you can run it along the bottom as well as right here on top of this banding area as well. Now another thing that you could do is to get a, um, a braid. And like I said before, braids are really popular and there's some really pretty ones out there. And you can use a small one like this and it's solid. Or you could maybe find one that um, has some more colors in it. And all you'd have to do is measure your face, your returns, and then the inside of the returns, and maybe a couple of inches on each side, uh, so that the braid can tuck underneath the lining. And this is something that, the braid is something that you can add um, after the corner spread has been fabricated, and you can certainly add it um, during the fabrication process. So that, like I said, the ends would be tucked underneath the, the blackout lining on the back. And all you'd have to do is maybe um, use a little fringe adhesive on the back to get it to stick onto the banding. Now here's another little piece of uh, trim that I found um, in my trim box. And you can see how uh, nice that would look along the bottom as well. And even though it doesn't have any white in it, if you, ch if you chose to use this twist cord, you can see how they match. And so they would certainly blend. It's like again, if the, there is this color, um, somewhere in the room. Now another option is to use these Chinese knots. And I've made these Chinese knots um, by using turn cord. And they're just, I, I really like them. And it really gives like a 3D effect, if you will. I always like to use um, uneven numbers. And I only have three, so I'm just going to put the three on there and I'm going to pin them on just to give you an idea of what they might look like. Now um, if I were to, to attach these to a cornice board I would either hot glue them or you can take your stapler and you can get up um, in between uh, the cording and you can hide your staples. You can get up in there and staple and uh, move it around and push it up and staple and push it down and they will hold nicely. And like I said, these just really um, give a nice little 3D effect. If I can get that in there, get an idea. And again, I would, I would certainly put, I would put in probably five on this one. Now I will tell you that um, this style cornice board really, really, really looks nice with um, like a, a strip of leather down here, or faux leather, and then maybe a, um, a nice uh, chenille fabric up top, and then with nail heads right along here. I mean, that the nail heads just really finish this style cornice board off very nicely. And talking about nail heads, even though this is like a little cotton, you know, they are putting nail heads on just about anything these days. And place the right color nail head and place nicely really um, spruces up a cornice board. Now I am just only going to just put in a couple here because I just have one more thing I want to show you. So 
I try to push it in there. But here I have just two little um, brushed nickel nail heads. And can you see how nicely this cornice board would look if I had a row of brushed nickel nail heads here as well as along the bottom row? It just really gives it a more up-to-date look, doesn't it? Now there's one more option I want to give you, and that is covered buttons. Now these covered buttons, like I said, I would go ahead and place them. I've made five of these, and I would center them, and I'm going to place them, let's see, hopefully they'll stay. And I'm doing this upside down, so hopefully I've got them even. And then one more. And you can just see how, you know, a nice little covered button really gives it a nice finished look as well. Now the last cornice board that I want to show you is this little one that's covered in a little silk plaid. Now we could have certainly have added the a banding along the bottom like we did in the first cornice board. But you could always take some pre-made uh, trim, like this pleated trim that I have here, and you can put that along the bottom. And you could even bring it um, to the top if you'd like. Or you could even put it in the center. But it, it looks a little plain to me. So I'm going to take it and I am going to uh, put it right about here. Okay. And again, you're going to want to have enough trim to go across your face down each side and wrap around to the inside of your legs so maybe like an inch and a half on each side. You can add this one after the, the uh, corner board has been covered uh, and you can also do it after it's covered and uh, before you um, add your lining on the back. And then you just take a little bit of adhesive and just lightly uh, give it enough adhesive there to um, stay put on the face and on the sides and then staple it to the back. But let's um, add a little bit more elements to it. How about this little uh, purple uh, piece of trim that I have made? And this is just a piece of fabric and that's probably about um, oh, almost an inch. So let's just say that uh, I had uh, two, I cut this maybe about two and a half inches. Well, whatever size that you need, um, you can cut it and then stitch it uh, uh, on the back and turn it. And again, make sure that you have enough to go across your face and around your sides and to your back. And that, that looks really nice along there. But if you really wanted to add a little bit more to it, n uh, nobody tells you that you cannot add nail heads to silk. So I've added some little um, kind of brush nickel nail heads to this trim. And can you imagine what that would just look like? That would look so sweet. And I'm just going to, like I said, I don't want to nail these in because I have more to show you. So I'm just going to kind of poke them in there just to get where well, I don't want to go through that trim until I, I nail it in. But this just gives you an idea of how that would look along that bottom edge. And again, you can very easily put it in the center, you can run it uh, vertically, and you can put it along the top. You can leave the nail heads just in the center, or you can run them across the whole bandy. And the nail heads you would definitely um, add after the cornice board was finished. Now, if this, and I think, you know, that kind of look Yes, you can put this into a little girl's room, um, again, maybe a laundry room. Uh, just depends on, you know, what colors, uh, what room you can use these colors in. But let's say that it was a little girl's room. And let's say that you want it to maybe add, let me pin these, this little banding along the bottom here. Again, I'm looking upside down, I'm trying to get it straight for you. And again, I would uh, just probably glue this down or, or use some sort of um, little adhesive stripping uh, to 
put the two together. I want to take this, off. and I'm going to put this right here. Hopefully that will fit across. It almost does. Just want to get give you a how it would look by adding all this. So I'm just, right now I'm just going to pin it. Okay. Now say this was um, a little girl's room or even a nursery and you wanted to add this. You can definitely again take some fabric and you can make these uh, Chinese uh, I use turn cord. This is fabric and I've turned it over the cording and you can make these cute little uh, Chinese knots and you could take them and you could put them along the bottom here and all you would do is you know I would definitely finish this off in the back I would you know cut this back and hand stitch it and you could take it and you could hot glue them on or you could probably get up and get up in here with a, your staple gun and staple it down and then you have that there and you could make you know maybe three of them like I like the uneven number again and add these little Chinese knots along the bottom or you could take pick out one of the colors within the within the fabric pick out the, the mint green and again take some turn cord and just make a like a little I know like a little decorative 3D kind of flower if you will or with little leaves and you could put this go ahead and put that on there or you can move it up in the corner and go ahead and staple it down into the corner it gives it like a little 3D effect or you could take another uh, solid uh, fabric if you didn't want to pick out I have cream actually down here and this is more uh, an ivory color but you can definitely just make some little uh, flowers with the Chinese knot in the center and and just add that onto the cornice board like a little 3d effect so that just gives you some ideas that now I want to show you one more element that um, you can add to a cornice board. You can take and if you have panels of course you can take panels and overlay them onto the top and you can pleat them or you can gather them and you can uh, go ahead and staple them down or you can use this little pin strip. If you're going to add panels or something you can take this this little pin strip here and you can uh, take a, a, a screw and screw it into the top or you can take your uh, your staple gun and you can see that it has a little groove here and you can just take it and right through here staple this right on the top of your cornice and of course on the return and you could use your um, put your drapery hooks onto your drapery and you can see how let me show you the drapery hooks would go you know right in here if you wanted to hang some draperies off of a cornice board, you can do that. But for this demonstration, I have made two little jabots. And I'm going to take those jabots, and you can see how I have, I'll show you the pattern in just a minute, but I have taken these little jabots, and I knew that I wanted to bring this in about three or four inches. And I did two and a half times fullness, and I uh, made these little jabots. And I took a running stitch and I gathered them right here. If I turn it over, you can see my little gathering stitch. I did it about an inch down because I wanted the top to just be kind of curvy and free flowing. And then I'm going to put these jabots run along here. Right now I'm going to pin it and in a few minutes I will uh, put it up on the stand so you can see it better. I'll show you the pattern. And you can overlay jabots or pelmets. And I think it just gives this a nice little feel and again 
um, this this does this fabric and this look is really kind of a little girl style nursery to me anyway so right now I'm just going to pin it but then I'm going to put my little clip, clip strip on there just to show you so you can do that so can you just imagine this like I said in a little maybe a little girl's room and then if you wanted to add you know something like this in the center that may be a little bit too much or you can certainly take the little Chinese knots with a little green leafy looking turn cord and put one there and one here and I have one more element I want to show you why it's laying flat if I take this off and this and this if you want to give it a different look you can take this same little purple trim with attached nail heads and you can see that the nail heads have been evenly spaced then I will place it over the gathered stitch line and just line everything up nicely then I will push the nail heads through all the layers securing it to the cornice board as you can see I've attached both of the jabots onto the cornice board this jabot here is the one that I've added the purple tape to with the um, nail heads on top and I actually attach this uh, jabot by taking the, the nail heads gone through the fabric and then hammered right through, right into hammered that right into the cornice board this jabot here I used the pin strip and the drapery hooks like I spoke about earlier and all I did was take this pin strip and I placed it on top of the cornice board and I used my stapler and I stapled it down into the board and then I placed my drapery hooks onto the back of the jabot and then just slid it down through the holes and I would tell you that um, I found it, it to be a little bit fussy because these were really lightweight but if you were going to hang drapery off of your cornice board and you needed you thought you might want to remove them at some time at some point uh, to give it a new look or to clean the drapery this would be the way to go now one more option that you have to attaching pelmets or um, jabots or uh, if you want to attach permanent drapes to um, you can take and pin your jabot in place take your staple gum and just very carefully go in between the little gathers and just put some staples in there and then you just kind of pinch around the gathers to hide the um, staples now to determine the size of my jabots I simply took my uh, this is actually a plastic uh, tape measure I knew I wanted the top of the jabot to come above the cornice board so I just took my uh, tape measure one inch above and I brought it down to the length that I knew I wanted the inside edge to be and then I added about an inch and a half because I knew once I I stitched and along with the um, the seam allowance that this would shorten on me and I came to the side and I did the same thing I did went up one inch above and I determined how long that I wanted um, the finished length and added about an inch and a half to that and then I decided how far in I wanted to go on the face so I took my tape measure and measured my return and came in um, to the face to the finished length and I did two and a half times fullness I then drew a pattern on this white like craft paper that um, I picked up at the local um, office supply store and I drew my pattern and then I laid it down on the fabric and of course cut it out and then I cut um, fabric on the bias for my cording and I cord it completely around uh, the jabot and I did leave a little opening right here so that I could turn it and then I went back and hand stitched that close 
Now there are so many ways that you can embellish cornice boards. And what I showed you today is just a tip of the iceberg. But I hope it's been enough that will spark some creativity in you so that you can begin embellishing your very own cornice board. Now if you would like to learn more about how to build and fabricate a basic cornice board, then I would encourage you to take a look at my instructional video and you will find it on kimsupholstery.com. Thanks so much and please show me your finished product out there on Facebook.